Hi guys, welcome back to Iron Griffin Studio. So this week I've been making a little sundial and you know what, I'll give you a bit of a close up. A bit of a close up, there you go. Pretty sweet. Really, um, pretty simple uh, mini build this week. Uh, it's just three layers of foam with a little bit of etching on top, some detailed components, and then a bit of moss and some leaves. And yeah, that's pretty much it. This is hopefully going to be part of a much bigger, wider set where I create a few courtyard pieces of terrain that maybe are a little bit grimy and dark, maybe a little bit macabre, definitely depressing, and hopefully just generally pretty cool. So, yes, there's a sundial. Let's make a sundial. Okay, so I'm actually going to start with the middle layer of this sundial. This is just some uh, one centimeter thick XPS foam. And I just sharpied on a little bit of a, a message on the side. And then etched into it with an X-Acto blade. And then deepened those cuts with a sharpened paintbrush handle, which is my <laughs> go-to tool for this sort of thing. And then I moved on to the top layer of the sundial. I wasn't quite sure what uh, design I wanted to have. I knew I had to have the lines on for the sundial to kind of read the time. So I used a protractor to carefully figure out uh, a kind of like a 12-hour a clock over the top of the sundial. Uh, then I moved on to the base layer, which is the bottom layer, and just uh, used an aluminium ball to texture uh, the 3x3 square. And then I stuck down the middle layer with the message around the side. And then this is the design I came up with for the top. And I stuck that down with some hot glue as well. You'll see there's a design on the top there with a fleur de lis. Um, but I ended up kind of backtracking on this idea because I wasn't happy uh, with how well I cut it out, basically. Just to etch in the lines a little bit deeper, I just used an X-Acto knife and my usual uh, paintbrush handle tool again. Uh, you'll see I went for Roman numerals as well around the uh, for the clock face, for the dials. And uh, that's pre pretty much all of the etching done. Uh, I wanted to add a bit of a ornate middle section that would be underneath the pointer. Most sundials have this kind of interesting, uh, elaborate uh, piece that kind of props up the pointer. I could have cut this small gear thing that I had in half but I decided instead to kind of cut a very deep groove in the XPS form and then just sort of submerge half of that gear cog sprocket thing uh, underneath the form and just kind of wedged it in there and this turned out to be a much better option and it was much more secure and yeah it looks still look really good. Okay, so every sundial needs a pointer, and uh, I, I have these arrowhead uh, toothpicks or cocktail sticks, and these are just plastic. I got these on eBay, I get about 200 in a box or something for pretty cheap, and I figured they'd be pretty useful for pretty much everything, like railings and stuff, but also apparently sundial pointers. And uh, I just cut one in half and offered it up, and it, it looked about right. So I glued that down, and then I also, you'll notice, glued down a another gear over the top of the fleur de lis design that was on there. Uh, this looked a lot better in the end and it was more cohesive with the design of the cog and gear uh, underneath the sundial pointer. So I undercoated the whole thing black with Mod Podge and black paint and then a pretty heavy overbrush of a kind of medium grey all over the whole thing. I really like this step because it really sort of shows off all that detail that you've uh, etched into the form, whether it's with the X-Acto knife uh, or with just the aluminium ball, uh, it just really helps pick out all those lines and really shows off all that detail. It starts to come together really nicely at this point. And at this point, because it was looking quite grey, I decided to 
take a few tans and browns and brush on a few little bits of these kind of warmer earthy tones uh, just to give a bit of variation in the stonework. After all, stonework isn't just always grey and there's a lot of browns and tans involved there so that made it look a lot better. And then I took some bronze paint, uh, just an acrylic by uh, Game Colour or Vallejo and uh, just went at the kind of all the metallic work that will be on the top of the sundial including the gear design behind it. And with that bronze paint dry it's time to do the wash stage which is basically my normal wash. I use this on pretty much everything, I've used it in pretty much every video I've ever made. It's just a black brown mixture with a little bit of uh, water involved just to help thin it out a little bit because it is quite thick and um, this goes over the entire piece. I'm trying to avoid a lot of the bronze but it gets everywhere. I then chose some nylac oxide and this is part of the reason why I chose bronze as the uh, the main material for this um, metallic work because I, I really like using this nylac oxide it gives a really good weathered effect and you get what's called a, a verdigris uh, which is sort of this oxidation of the copper in bronze and so when I apply it I pretty much cover it pretty heavily uh, entirely in this stuff making sure to get it in all of the cracks and crevices almost like a wash and then I use a little bit of uh, tissue paper and just dab away the excess uh, that seems to have cooled uh, in pretty heavy spots Alright, so I use Woodland Scenics Burnt Grass and Yellow Grass Fine Turf for some moss. Uh, I mix it up, on, uh, in this case, on top of a cup with a bit of PVA glue so that it kind of forms a bit of a paste. Uh, and then I just sort of use a, a kind of a sculpting tool to uh, apply it quite generously to uh, most of the stonework. I suppose it's also worth mentioning that while I made the sundial I also made a small display area for it um, because it is quite a small piece normally and uh, this is just you know a typical kind of dungeon uh, one inch grid square piece with um, some flower beds at the side. The bricks made just from XPS form and the paste in the middle is just uh, an acrylic earth texture uh, which is a really good dirt analog. And then I just gave it the same paint job and added some flowers and that should hopefully sell the piece. Please excuse the amount of paint on my hands. At this point I was doing a paw painting at the same time. <laughs> added some moss again as usual and I also put on a few of the uh, small scatter leaves as well. There we are guys all finished and uh, it was a pretty quick pretty simple build. The, uh, the, the details on the top the kind of the metallic components there really make it kind of pop and uh, I'm pretty happy with it and you remember it doesn't have to be a typical sundial you know like it could be pointing the way towards something or it could be something like a, like a moon dial is that a thing? I don't know um, maybe it depicts or shows the direction of some other weird force uh, I mean it could be magical it could be something for your players to investigate and you know what? It's so big that people can stand on it. I use it as cover, and you know, it's 
pretty sweet. I'm really quite pleased with it. And hopefully uh, when paired up with some other interesting courtyard terrain, it will look really cool and very much like within the setting. So yeah, I'm very, uh, I'm very pleased with it. So I am on Instagram if you want to check me out on there. I'm also on Facebook. Feel free to go on there and follow me. Uh, this little guy here still needs a name. Um, I'm trying to get a few more names together. So let's see uh, if anyone has a good name for this little Iron Griffin for the channel. as like a bit of a mascot kind of thing. And uh, yeah, let me know your suggestions. I do have some Amazon affiliate links in the description below. If you are in the UK, you can feel free to use them and I get a little bit of a, a kickback in terms of um, like a finder's fee sort of thing. And uh, it costs you absolutely nothing extra. So that's really good for me. Um, I am thinking about setting up a Patreon account at some point. Um, let me know if you guys would be, if that's something that you guys would be open to, to contributing with. It would only be for something like a dollar. Um, per month or something or per video I don't know how it works exactly um, but it's just something I'm thinking about in the future and um, yeah I mean it might be something that's worthwhile giving it a go and it might help um, help me produce more videos and more interesting content uh, for the channel so let me know in the comments as well about that so that's it for this video uh, feel free to like comment and subscribe and ding that bell thing and uh, hopefully I can get another video out to you guys really soon Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you again next time and happy crafting.